Hey y'all, so let's make some fluffy cleaning slippers. <laughs> Hey y'all, so I guess I'm like really late to the party when it comes to this loop yarn. I've seen it make, you know, used to make scarves and pillows and blankets, but today I'm going to use it to make some fluffy cleaning slippers. Now I've made these slippers before a long, long time ago using just the Bernat blanket yarn. So it's gonna be like a play on that project, but just using this pre-looped yarn. Now the really cool thing about it is I've noticed that it comes in a variety of colors through a variety of different brands. So the loop yarn, the benefit of it is you don't use a crochet hook or any knitting needles. You simply use your hands, you construct the project that way, and then you just move forward. So, so in addition to your hands and the yarn, you'll also need a, yar a large eye um, needle. And I found this nice plastic one here with a really large eye on Amazon, but you can also get it from your box stores like your Hobby Lobby and your Michael. So while stitch markers aren't optional, they do come in handy. You'll also need a pair of scissors. Keep in mind this is a chunky yarn, so you will want a large eye needle. For the size slipper that I'm going to create, I'm going to need 12 loops. However, we're going to need a tail to sew everything together. So I'm going to count over a total of 16. Four of those loops I'm going to use to create the tail, and I'll show you how to do that. But 12 will be used to create the slipper. So let's go and get started with that. So as you see here, all the loops are, like I said before, they're pre-sewn together. But what I'm going to do in order to make the tail is I'm going to snip that string that's keeping it together. I'm going to snip it so that I make a long tail. Now, I'm doing four because I need the tail to be long enough to be able to sew the um, crochet slippers together. Um, but if you're using it for any other project, you don't need to leave this long of a tail, okay? Okay, so as you can see now, once I've um, snipped the four loops, it leaves me a nice tail, and I'm gonna just ensure that I have 12 loops remaining. So this is the tail here, and I'll count over to ensure that I have 12 loops, and this will vary, guys, depending on the size of your foot. If you need a wider foot, you'll wanna do 13 or even 14. Um, and if you have a smaller, a narrower foot, you want to do 11. Okay, so once I have it counted out, I am going to use a stitch marker. You can use a paper clip or whatever you have to just ensure that you keep that number of, of loops available for you to work the project, okay? So here, I'm going to try to talk us through this process. However, if you follow along with the screen, it might be easier to see. Okay, so let's start this. It's going to be a lot easier to see on the screen, I think I said that earlier. So what you're doing is you're essentially, you're going to have the bottom row of loops and you're going to have the row right above it. You're going to feed the row that's above into the bottom row. So it, initially it's going to look like the they're side by side, but as you work around, then you'll start being able to see that there's actually a defined top row and a defined bottom row, okay? So when you first start the the first two stitches, stitch 12 in loop 12 and loop 13, they're side by side. You're going to put loop 13 into loop 12. That makes sense. And then you're going to keep working that all the way down, kind of down the row until you do a total of 12 loops. Okay. So again, you're just going to make sure you pull the loop from the top row through the loop on the bottom row. So it's easier to see on the screen than I'm telling you, but as you pull the loops through, just make sure you give it a nice little tug, a little pull to make sure that it lies flat as you're creating the project, okay? Now, initially this first row, and I would say this with probably any project, your first row, second row, is usually the row that's the most challenging. But once you get through this, guys, it's super, super simple, and I promise you, you can get through this project probably in a good hour and um, be done with it, okay? So again, I'll stay on screen quite a uh, quite a bit of time here to just make sure you understand how to start the actual project. Now I will admit there are a lot of great tutorials on YouTube that have really good detailed instructions on how to use it, this yarn, but honestly, I feel like if you can just follow along here, we can keep going, <laughs> but if you need a little bit more instruction, just search loop yarn and you might get a better tutorial or if i pick up some more of this yarn i may do another tutorial just to show you how but i really honestly feel like i'm late to the game because i've seen projects all over the internet and i picked up the yarn 
on clearance so I wanted to make something with it okay so as you're starting to work it just pull those loops up and that will help you see it start to develop so basically what we're doing here is considered a um, this is like knitting not so much crocheting um, so I think like in a knit world this would be considered like a knit stitch or a garter stitch and then the other side that's creating itself is a purl stitch and I just set that because it's going to look different on both sides being that I'm a crocheter I'm not 100% sure but I do believe that that's what these are called you will make sure that you're just pulling the loop up as you're once you insert the loop into the loop below it you want to just make sure you give it a nice little pull okay and you're only going to need to go up for this project 11 rows so we've already got two rows completed and I did that on camera with you and I'm talking my way through it so just imagine if you're doing this on your own after you get the hang of it you can whip this up really really quickly okay so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next row and it's easier if you're working on a flat surface to go ahead and move your yarn over so that again you can have that top row bottom row dynamic and it might be easier for you to see which loop belongs to which loop because essentially you want them to line up but you don't want to leave any loops un um, um you don't want to leave any loops un looped <laughs> what is the word i'm looking for because if you do then you'll have a hole in your fitty so just ensure that you're lining up the loops as you're working and that way you'll have a nice complete project I'm going to speed the video up here as you can see staying on camera just so that you can make sure you get it all the way down. Once we get this part completed I'm going to come off camera I'll let you work independently making sure you go up to row 11. Again row 11 is for a size 8.5, 8, 8.5, eight, eight 9 foot that's US women's size. Um, if you want to go smaller then do row 10. If you want to do larger do row 13. Okay. You'll keep working across until you get to the very end and then again you'll just kind of move the yarn on top so you'll basically have another row. Just remember guys that this is a very chunky yarn. I've said it before. I think it's a bulk of seven. You are going to have to play with it a little bit especially when you get to sewing everything together. But don't let that discourage you guys because it really does make for a cute slipper at the end. So just pause this video at this point, keep working until you get to the desired number of rows, and then we're going to finish it off, okay? So here we are. I am at the end of where I need to be. Remember, we're going to leave four loops the same way we did at the beginning in order to have a long enough tail to secure everything together to make our slipper. Now, I if you can look at the screen here, they these rows are created, but they create what I what looks like to me column. Each loop is in its own column. So to finish this off, what I'm doing now is just snipping the loops like I did earlier so I have my tail. So to finish this off, you all, let's kind of look at it like a column. And what you're going to do is take a loop from one column and then put it into the loop of the next column. So now we're looking at it from left to right and essentially we are just feeding one loop into the other loop and that's going to create kind of like a uh, single crochet stitch or a chain stitch so that way we get it all the way over across into um, next to the the long tail and then we can tie a knot and finish it all off so you can kind of see here on the screen what I'm doing basically I'm taking a loop from one column and I'm and I am um, looping it over the loop from the other column so it's easy to see as opposed to me explaining it, but just do that all the way across. Okay, so just keep working. Now, if you were going to make another project like a scarf or something like that, you would just keep going. You would keep going to get the desired length for the scarf um, and then you would be done. But in this case, since we're making cute little slippers we're going to end it here at row 11 and then we're going to use that tail to secure our tire work so see how that looks there really pretty neat finish and i'm just going to secure everything with that tail and i'm just going to tie a knot that's what makes it easy for me to know that it's not going to come apart okay guys so now we're getting very close to constructing everything you want to make sure that you have a nice little knot there now if you look at this piece of work that you created you have two sides you have a smooth side which i call the knit side or the garter stitch side and then you have the pearl side our slippers are going to be constructed where the smooth side is where your feet are actually going to sit and then the pearl side is going to be the outer side of your slipper 
Um, so that's how we're going to do that. Now, if you want it to look differently, then just flip it the other way. But I feel like that pearl side might be a little bit more bumpier on your foot. Now, this is where your yarn needle is going to come into play. And the larger the eye, the better because you, you're using such a bulky yarn. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sew along this raw edge at the top. Well, actually, that was the bottom, what we first created. So I'm going to use that part to create the toe. Um, using that four inch tail or that long tail that we had, I'm going to now weave in and out between the stitches to be able to gather this project together. And it's easier to show it on the screen. So again, I am just literally weaving in and out, in and out, going behind one stitch or one um, column in front of a column, behind a column in front of a column until this all gathers together. As you can see here on the screen, I'm removing that stitch marker because I don't need it at this point. And then just give it a tug. Now again, this is a bulky yarn, guys, so you're gonna have to kind of work with it, but it's not difficult. It's just, you gotta, you know, work with it. Once you get it pulled together, then you're gonna make sure that the right side is facing out, which in this case, I want it to be that bumpy pearl side. And you're now just kind of work that toe area of your slipper. Do you see how that looks there? So at this point, because you have your toe area cinched together, you're gonna to be able to kind of see how it's folding together kind of naturally. What I did was I used my stitch markers to kind of secure the toe area. It's about four inches up, it's not that far up, and that's the area that's kind of like the bridge, I guess is that the bridge of your foot? But the toe and then that, that area right at the top of your foot, and then along the back area is where we're gonna create the heel. So this is why this is a super easy project to complete, but you will need that large eye um, needle to make sure that you get it right now you do not have to be a great sewer that's why another reason why this is a great yarn because it's so forgiving because any imperfections are hot are hidden within the thickness of the yarn so in my case I just kind of did like a little whip stitch along the back portion of my slipper and I don't even know if that's what it's called <laughs> that's just what I call it but basically I'm just inserting the cro the um, yarn needle um, into both sides of the sock so between one stitch and the other stitch on the other side and then i'm just kind of bringing it over and then back through so that's how i'm sewing it across and down what you'll want to do is make sure that you don't leave any gaping holes here and in my case i had enough yarn to go down and then back up so that's why it was important for you to leave that long tail at the beginning of the project and at the end of the project so that you didn't have to figure out how you're going to attach the yarn or anything like, anything like that it's already there so i sew down and then i sew back up and that's going to allow me to feel like this slipper is secure okay so keep doing that and then once you have that completed you're going to work on that toe area again so i did this so that i can start seeing it shaped up and that's the way i did it okay now um really quickly this is really the project this is really how it's ended you do not have to go further once you get the um toe area stitched up and the heel area stitched up you have a nice fluffy sock slipper that you can use for anything you know to just keep your foot warm or whatever i particularly like to use it when i am cleaning my house i like to put on these type of slippers when i am mopping or vacuuming my home i have hardwood floors and i also have tile in my kitchen so when i'm mopping this is very absorbent it's very soft and i can wash them easily enough so i i like using them for that and i make these often not particularly with this loop yarn I've made these before again on my channel you'll see other projects that I've made with Bernat blanket yarn making these slippers but I think they're perfect for you know cleaning up <laughs> my home so again this is what it looks like when it's on like a little foot mannequin as you can see it's done at this point however <laughs> if you followed me for before if you're new to my channel I love to do that that extra that extra i thought the loop yarn was really cool it was cute and so i decided that i was going to kind of play with it a little bit and so in this case i measured it out along the side of the slipper and then i just pinned it down with my stitch marker so i could see how it's going to look so this part right here this embellishment area it's kind of play you do not have to do this if you just wanted to put a cute little bow 
on it or not put a bow on it you could do that but I added this little loop now in fairness it was not as easy to attach the loops as I was hoping for because the yarn is thick it is a chenille type yarn um, it was hard for me to figure out how to get the uh, needle through the thread through the, the through the yarn so I kind of did like a loopy thing around the top part of the um, slipper through the loop and I'll show you that on camera it's not that great of an angle because I had to work with it some but again this project being so quick I didn't mind spending that extra 15 minutes 20 minutes trying to figure out how I wanted it to be secured but once I figured it out as you can see here on the screen I think it turned out really great <laughs> it was fun so I like I said I'm new I'm new to the loop yarn I enjoyed using it. it the project was super quick I enjoyed the fact that you do not have to have a crochet hook or knitting needles to complete the project it's easily adjustable again a wider foot you're just going to start your foundation row instead I said you know I did 12 so you would do 13 or 14 for a longer slipper you would just do another row do 12 rows or 13 rows um, if you want it to be a shorter slipper do less rows like 10 or 9 so and I say all this in comparison to the US um, measurements for women women's foot okay so this is kind of what it looks like again you want to work with it make it look like look like something this is how I would wear it I just think it's cute <laughs> It's just cute. So that's it, guys. If you have any questions about anything, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I absolutely love engaging with you when I have an opportunity to do that. And, you know, I look forward to seeing if there's any other projects I can do with the loop yarn. I just don't need any more blankets right now, but I think it'll be a great project for blankets, obviously. Of course, scarves. I'm in Florida, so I don't ever really need a really, really chunky scarf, but, you know, depending on where you are you can make a quick scarf really quickly so that's it guys i hope you have a wonderful day i will see you all in my next video if you have not subscribed to my channel please take the time to do that i try to put out videos often and i will see you soon bye